Hey guys, I recently built a shower for camping uh, on my overlanding trips and I mounted it up here to the rack on my Jeep and uh, since I posted pictures of it on Instagram I got a lot of questions about um, you know how it works, uh, what parts I use, how much it cost to build and uh, so I thought I'd put a, together a little video and kind of explain uh, how I built it you know and talk about all the parts that went into it and I'll leave a detailed list in the description of the different parts and how much they cost uh, but I'm going to give an overview right here about how I went about building it and also talk about uh, some of the things that you know in retrospect I would maybe do differently uh, some of the things that I, that I don't necessarily like about my build although although I'm very happy with it overall um, there's already a couple things I noticed I would do probably do differently um, so yeah I'm going to give you a walk around and tour of the camp shower all right, so here's the shower mounted on my rack. I've got a Garvin uh, Expedition rack on my JKU, and um, this is the front of the shower here. And I'll just kind of go down the side so you can kind of check it out. But it's just mounted on the side of the rack, and I'll show you the mounts here in a second. That's one of the things that I would probably do differently, um, and I might I'll probably still change. Um, but here's the end of it. And since we're down at the end, I'll go ahead and talk about some of this. So this is a, uh, an adjustable pressure release valve that I got off Amazon, about $11. And it, it's adjustable from 0 to 100, um, 100 PSI. I've got it set on, um, as you can see, you can see that um, it says 50, but it's not super accurate. It's pretty close. Um, but it's probably set to go off at about, uh, it's probably going off about 40 PSI now. Um, next thing up here, we've got a Schrader valve. This is where I pressurize the tank. And then up here at the top, got a uh, pressure gauge. So I can tell how much pressure is in the tank. So, some of the fittings here I'll, I'll talk about. This is a cross. This is a three quarter to half inch reducer bushing. This is a half inch to quarter inch reducer bushing. And this is threaded here in this end. Same thing on all three of these. So all three of these are uh, quarter inch NPT fittings, threaded fittings. Um, so that's this end. Then in the end of this, um, we've got, coming out of this end, there's a small piece of pipe. You can't see it because it goes directly into this part. Uh, but it is a three quarter inch uh, PVC pipe that's cut probably, I don't know, it's probably inch and a half maybe going into this um, three-quarter inch to two inch uh, reducer coupling uh, reducer bushing excuse me I think it's the correct terminology and then from here you've got a uh, two inch to four inch reducer bushing going into a four inch to six inch reducer so that allows me to go from three quarter inch all the way up to six inch, which this is a six inch uh, PVC pipe. All of this, by the way, is schedule 40 PVC, which is supposed to handle somewhere around 100 PSI, I think 110 PSI maybe. Don't quote me on that. You can look it up online. Um, I'm not airing it up to anywhere close to that pressure, so I'm not worried about anything uh, exploding on me or bursting. Anyway, so this was a, a 10 foot piece of six inch diameter PVC. I cut it down to about four foot uh, three inches, I think, and then the rest of these fittings make up the everything up to this is about five feet total, I believe. So, coming from the six inch PVC pipe going into a six inch uh, by four inch T. So, both ends of this are six inch. This is a four inch T up here, uh, which goes into a four inch to two inch. Reducer bushing. Let me try to get a little higher so you can see that. And then that four inch to two inch reducer bushing goes into a two inch clean out. And that's where I unscrew that and fill up the tank. Now, one thing on that clean out up here, I had to um, Teflon tape it. It's threaded because it was leaking air just a little bit. Not a lot, but it was enough to. To decrease the pressure enough to where it's noticeable so i just teflon tape that 
um, when I closed it off. And actually I thought I'd have to do it every single time I opened and closed it to fill it up. But I unscrewed it today and the Teflon tape still seemed to be good. So I, I don't know that I'll have to do it every single time. Um, but just be aware you'll have to Teflon tape it um, to keep it really tightly sealed. So next, out of the T, come back into a shorter piece of the 6 inch PVC. And then on this end is just a 6 inch cap. Now down here I've got a, a half inch boiler drain. That's just what it's called. It's called a boiler drain, but it's essentially just a, a faucet opening you can open. And uh, this is where I plug in my water hose. So everything gets pressurized down on this end here, pressurizes the tank, and then I open up this valve here, and then I've got a, a trigger on my water hose that I just used to, to spray off with. So those are all the parts on the tank. Now what I'll talk about is um, how I mounted it to the rack. All right, here we are up on top. And this is the, the end down here with the Schrader valve and everything. So I've attached this to my rack with some ratchet straps. And each one of these is supposed to hold like a 600 pound limit, which this is nowhere close to that. I think I haven't weighed it yet, but I'm guessing empty. The pipe probably weighs about, I don't know, maybe 25 pounds. Um, so yeah, I've just got it ratchet strapped. You can see right through here. Got it hooked to my rack, one of the bars of my rack here. So I've got, I've got that in both spots, uh, back here and then up, up front there. Now on each one of these, I've got a piece of wood and the wood is cut out at a curve, the curvature of the pipe. So the pipe actually draws up against that piece of that block of wood here. And then on the back of the wood, I've just taken a, uh, I'm not sure what you call this. It's a L bracket, I believe, metal L bracket that I bent the side down on. So it's, it's screwed to the back of this block and then I, it, you know, naturally it bends over to an L like this. And then I've bent this end down. So that's how I, it's hanging on, it's basically hanging. The weight, the bulk of the weight of the tank is hanging off the top bar of my rack. Uh, but then to keep it sucked up against the side, that's what I use these ratchet straps for. I'm not super crazy about this for a couple reasons. One, the, the block of wood, obviously, you know, I don't, I don't think this is treated wood. I've painted it black, but wood is not the strongest material. You know, it should probably should be some kind of uh, metal mounting bracket or something. So I'm going to try to come up with something else. And this ratchet strap, I mean, you know, it's probably fine, but I, it seems like it could fail on me. So I'm going to try to come up with another way to strap this around here. All right, guys, so let's do a little uh, demo of the shower hall hooked up. As I was talking about, I've got my onboard compressor up under here. I've got my compressor hose ran to the back here and clamped onto the ladder and then ran into the Schrader valve. So this is where I'm going to air up and pressurize the tank. And I've got my water hose hooked up here to the, the boiler drain. And I've got my water spigot uh, little trigger thing here. So I'm going to pressurize the tank real quick. It's, it's filled up to about, I don't know, halfway, three quarters of the way full. Um, so I'm going to go back here and pressurize it to 30 PSI. Alright, so that's about 30 right there. Now I'm going to open the spigot here. And now we got some water. Open this up a little bit more. There you go. So that's about what you'd use for a shower. And then if you wanted a jet stream, it'll it'll do that too. Nice pressure. Plenty of water to wash your Jeep off with. Um, you know, like I said, mainly it's gonna be used for shower, but you know, if you're out on the trail and wanna get some mud off or something like that or whatever you want to use it for, you got plenty of pressure here. Alright guys, so that's the shower. Um, so far my overall impression is I really like it. Uh, really great pressure. I think, you know, so here's a couple things. One, I'm using my onboard air compressor that I use to air up my tires with. It's a um, ARB, uh, the single compressor. So I pressurize it, spray a little bit, and the pressure obviously is going to go down. I have to go back and, and air it up some more and pressurize it back up to about 30 PSI. So I can already tell that's 
you know, maybe going to be a pain. So what I'm considering doing is buying um, a separate dedicated air compressor. Uh, I've seen them on Amazon for like 27, that 27 bucks, 30 bucks, and what that would allow me to do is leave the, leave it hooked up to the tank, and these air compressors, you turn them on, and you can set them to a certain pressure, and they will shut off at that pressure that you set it at. So I could I could leave it uh, hooked up to the tank, spray all I wanted to, and the pressure dropped below the set it, uh, pressure I have it set to, it would air it back up to 30 psi is probably what I'd set it to. So I'd never have to stop and go back here and, and squeeze the uh, air compressor to, to air it back up. So that's one thing I'll probably do. Um, like I said, I'll probably change the mount, the way I have this strapped and the mounting blocks to the rack. I'm not really happy with that. Um, it looks good and it works for now, but uh, over the long haul, I don't know if it's gonna hold up. So other than that, I really love it. Um, the true test, of course, is gonna be taking it out camping to see if it holds up. Uh, I filled it up with water, I've driven around town and, and everything still seems to be really tied on it. So no, no real qualms there. Um, but I think I've got, I haven't calculated this yet, but I think I've got around 220 bucks in parts, something like that. Now I also had to spend a little money on a few uh, tools that I didn't have to actually install it and build it, like to tap out this, um, and I didn't talk about that, but I had to tap a hole here in the bottom of the tank to screw in this half inch boiler drain. I didn't own a tap, so I had to go to Harbor Freight and buy a little set of taps. That was, I think, $12. Um, I had to buy a handle for the tap. So a couple things like that. I didn't talk about the, the PVC glue and primer and that sort of thing. I, I don't really consider that in the cost. Those are minimal. Um, the cost is basically all the, all the parts, the fittings and everything that I used. Um, I'm gonna put together a detailed list and calculate exactly how much I spent, but I think it's around 220 bucks, somewhere around there. And when you consider the same size uh, shower from Road Shower, uh, it's aluminum, it's not PVC, but I think it's around, I think it's pretty close to 500 bucks. I've seen other people build these for a lot less. They say around 80 bucks, 100 bucks in parts. Um, I think that's with smaller pipe. I think that's with four inch pipe. I wanted to go bigger pipe, six inch pipe, because it'll hold, it'll hold more water in a shorter length. Um, plus the walls are thicker. So that's some of the reasons I went with six inch pipe. Um, this will hold uh, about six gallons. Uh, no, I take that back, about five gallons, I believe. I looked online and it's about a, uh, a gallon per foot length with a six inch pipe. So this, like I said, it's about five, a little over five feet. So I'm guessing it's, it's gonna hold about five gallons. If I hold it and spray the water continuously um, and you know go back and pump it up as I spray it, it'll drain in about, I think about three or four minutes. So, you know, if you're, if you're really conservative with your water usage when you're taking a shower, I think you can probably get about four or five uh, conservative camp showers out of it, which is, which is okay for me. So that's it for this review. Um, I had fun building it. It was a fun project. Um, wasn't very difficult. I'm, I consider myself somewhat handy. Uh, I don't do much PVC work at all. Um, but if you're handy with a saw, I used a miter saw to, to cut the length on the PVC. Uh, if you're handy a little bit, you should be able to do this no problem. 